Welcome to the Empire State Building in New York City, one of the most famous buildings in all of the world. I'm Ariel with Urbanist and today we're going to walk around the observation deck and learn a little bit about the history of this iconic building, how it got built, and how it survived a very deadly crash. I'm Ariel with Urbanist and let's go to the Empire State Building. So right now we are looking view at views of downtown Manhattan. We see the One World Trade Center there in the distance. It's currently the tallest building in New York City, the tallest building in the United States of America. Let's zoom in, in a little bit more. However, in that area of Manhattan, that is the birthplace of the skyscraper. Right there, New York City started growing further and further up but why did we even build skyscrapers in the first place well for that we have to go back to the great fire of 1871 not in new york but in chicago chicago was completely consumed in the huge fire many of the original historic buildings were lost and people were very afraid of new structures being built with not enough fireproofing. Thus, they resorted to a different type of building material, and that was steel. However, steel enabled buildings to be much lighter and build further up. However, there was a second invention needed for skyscrapers to even exist. And for that, we can go and look at one specific building here in the skyline. Here we see the Flatiron Building. The Flatiron Building is considered to be one of the very first skyscrapers in New York City, built in 1902. The invention that really changed construction was the elevator. Back in the 1893 Columbia Exposition, which we see... Here's a closer look at the Flatiron Building. Back in the 19, 80, 1893 Columbia Exposition in Chicago, Otis Redding Company, Otis Company, I mean, um, debuted the elevator with emergency air brakes. Elevator had been existing for a few, uh, 100, 200 years before then. Uh, they were very crude, technologically speaking, and mostly powered by ropes. Uh, actual men pulling on the ropes and they weren't used for passengers people were terrified of riding on a elevator because it could snap at any moment and cause a very very bad fall thus it was mostly used for cargo and anything industrial that changed when the Otis company invented the elevator with an air brake and installed one in the flat iron and also one in the Eiffel Tower in Paris. It became a huge hit and a massive tourist attraction, thus enabling people and cities to grow beyond six stories and go up into the skies. Thus, New York City started cropping up with skyscrapers all around, including here, the Metropolitan Life Insurance Building and the one with the larger golden top, which is the New York Life Insurance Building. However, why was, why was the Empire State Building built in the first place? Well, for that, we have to go back to 1929. A man was serving, was running for election against Republican Herbert Hoover. His competition was Al Smith, the governor of New York, who also was Catholic. He could have been the very first Catholic president. However, Herbert Hoover won in the massive landslide. And Al Smith was out of a job. He was no longer an elected political official. He wanted to cement his legacy in a different way. And that was by building tall. He teamed up with another executive.
Al Smith teamed up with John J. Raskop, who was an executive at GM and also a new executive at the DuPont Company. Two major, major companies in the U.S. and quickly becoming one of the biggest companies in the entire world. They wanted to best the Chrysler Building, which recently was crowned the tallest structure in the entire world. And thus, they bought a plot of land here at 34th Street and 5th Avenue, which used to belong to the Waldorf Astoria. That's the Waldorf Astoria, and it was a landmark of New York City. In, much in the style of many of the buildings we're seeing down here below. However, Waldorf Astoria was no longer quite the top cachet because most of New York City's aristocracy was moving further and further uptown into the Upper East Side. So what happened? Well, they bought up the land and they had some restrictions. They couldn't go as far up as they intended to because New York City had new zoning laws, which meant setback design. And these were the original setback limits of the Empire State Building. Thus, they had to think of a new style of architecture. And they hired the man who was consulting for a building that was racing to become one of the tallest buildings in the world. This was 40 Wall Street, which is down that area, no longer visible because we just have a bunch of more skyscrapers in the middle. That building at the moment in time was part of uh, a banking company and the consulting architect was William Lamb. And William Lamb, in a way, got his revenge on the Chrysler building becoming the tallest building because he was hired as the designer for the Empire State Building. Here we see Hudson Yards, which is the largest private development in American history. More than $25 billion are being spent to construct all around Hudson Yards. Here we see 30 Hudson Yards, which has an observation deck that is outdoor observation deck that is taller than the Empire State Building. It's called the Edge. And here we see a, a nice diagram that shows all the different top buildings in New York City. We get to see the Bank of America Tower right here which is all the way in last place, 30 Hudson Yards right over here, right there. And we see the Empire State Building, which is still currently number three. However, that might not last for long. They started getting into construction very quickly and taking photos at the same time. Lewis Hines was hired to take these promotional photos to show how the Empire State Building was being constructed at a rapid pace. The Empire State Building ended up being constructed in a mere 410 days, 18 months. It was ahead of schedule and also it went under budget, which is extremely rare for skyscrapers. However, there's one little unique part of the Empire State Building. You see the Zeppelins here in this photo? Well, there was a plan to dock Zeppelins in the sky. The reason the Empire State Building took the title of the tallest tower in all of the world is this mooring mast. Still called a mooring mast. And this was supposed to be a uh, area so the zeppelins or the dirigibles or also known as blimps could land and people could go down and basically hop onto the city however this was more talk than an actual engineering plan yes they kind of considered to land dirigibles but Shortly thereafter, the Hindenburg crashed and the appetite for dirigibles just was zapped out of the uh, 
world's appetite. However, it was also not doable, even in the beginning. There's too much wind up here. You can't really see it now, but come here on, on a, any other day that's a little bit more windy, it's unbearable. A zeppelin that would land over there would start tilting down and could you know, lead to a very terrible crash. So Al Smith said it was going to be a landing uh, zone for a dirigible, but it was actually just an excuse to build taller. And that's what te technically makes the Empire State Building 102 stories tall. Because right now we are on the 86th story. So we are in the 86th story. However, there is another observation deck, which was supposed to be the welcome area for the dirigibles, uh, is the 102nd story, which has amazing views of the city, wind, uh, floor to ceiling, windows. Uh, however, it's currently closed because it's the pandemic. Hopefully it'll open up once again. But when, once it was built, it was the tallest tower. People loved, were amazed by it, but they also were very scared about it. And um, tourists didn't really want to come at first. And te there was no new tenants aside from friends and family of the two developers. So the DuPont company had offices here, US Steel had offices here, GM had offices here, but not many other companies. That all changed in 1933 when King Kong came out in theaters, roared into theaters. In the film, he climbed the Empire State Building with the damsel in distress in his arms, trying to save her from the military planes that were trying to kill him. It was an epic movie and everyone ended up being obsessed with it. So they... end up taking advantage, charge only one dollar to come up to the observation deck and people were absolutely enamored with this with this these views and with this building. Let's go in. Here we see the super skinny skyscrapers that are now popping up all around New York City. Here we have 432 Park Avenue, which uh, beat the Empire State Building in, in, in height. We have Central Park Tower here, which is now uh, one, the second tallest building in New York City. One Vanderbilt also competing for that position. And let's zoom in, I'll show you the Chrysler building. So here is the Chrysler building, which the Empire State Building stole or, or took away the title for tallest building in the world. We have the MetLife building, which is right behind Grand Central Terminal. Here we have Bryant Park, and we have Central Park. However, unfortunately, September 11th, 2001 wasn't the first time that New York City experienced a airplane crash into a skyscraper. The first incident was July 25th. 
1945. A B-52 bomber, Mitchell bomber, was flying overhead in New York City. It was an extremely cloudy day, very foggy. And as he was trying to go towards LaGuardia Airport in this crew of three military personnel, LaGuardia Airport controllers said, do not land, we have zero, zero visibility. However, the pilot of the B-52 bomber flew in much worse circumstances in World War II, and he knew that, you know, he could probably land. So, he decided to try it anyway. He had to do some type of turn around the city to get to LaGuardia, and he ended up right here in the middle of skyscrapers. As the fog cleared up a little bit, he realized he was passing really close to a few of the skyscrapers here in Midtown Manhattan. However, he still was confident he could get to LaGuardia, so he persisted forward. The fog came back in, and he couldn't see anything. Zero visibility. Right at that time, a elevator operator by the name of Betty Lou Davis was riding the elevator all the way up. She was doing her job and as she was going up to the 78th floor a huge crash rumbled her elevator. She was injured, she had a cut on her forehead and she was a little bit d dazed from the impact. She started coming out of the elevator and the other people of the office ushered her into another elevator so she, so she can go back to safety. Another explosion occurred and suddenly the elevator started going down a fall. 1,000 feet, 75 stories down. Betty Lou Davis went on an elevator freefall that would kill almost anyone. However, air pressure started building around the elevator. The cables that were snapped started cluttering down on the basement and she landed with a cushion. She broke her back and two legs, but she survived. To this day, she has survived the biggest elevator freefall in the world. A miracle by all means. And the reason she free fell down to the basement a thousand feet was because of the impact of the B-52 bomber crashing into the 79th floor and destroying nearly three floors. The 78th altered the 80th. Here's a photo of Betty Lou Davis exiting the hospital in good spirits with her sailor boyfriend. And she ended up living a very long life, uh, passed away in 1999. So, miracle, absolute miracle. However, the Empire State Building was in a fiery blaze. People were afraid that the building would collapse. If the gasoline went any hotter, and if the tank was any more full, potentially the structural integrity of the Empire State Building could have been compromised. This is the hole that was left in the steel beams. Luckily, the building did not collapse. The Empire State Building stood up. We got very lucky that day. However, the Empire State Building was built at the height of the Great Depression, and many of many of the buildings that were built between after the Great Depression ended up being lower because there was not enough money to be poured into high rises. It wasn't quite it didn't make quite much sense, especially skyscrapers, the height 
of the Empire State Building. The Empire State Building ended up employing a lot of laborers, including Mohawk Native Americans, who came to work here because they saw uh, in their culture, it's a rite of passage to walk in very high places. To them, it was a way to enter manhood. And thus, they came here and worked fearlessly. According to many of the other employees, uh, who were mostly Irish and German Americans, uh, they were fearless. So imagine looking down here without any safety harness. Absolutely crazy. I don't know how they did it. Here's a good photo of a worker probably working in the same exact... Yep, yep, right here. The same exact spot. That's exactly where he was working. However, by the 1970s, things were starting to change. New York City was experiencing a few troubles, but money started growing globally. And thus, they started building the World Trade Center. And by 1973, it was completed and ended up becoming the tallest buildings in the world, beating the Empire State Building. But the Empire State Building to this day is still known as an icon because of its history, of its appearances in film, not only King Kong, but Sleepless in Seattle and a few others. And also because of its style, it's iconic in that Art Deco style. Because when all the newer skyscrapers were built, they were all, many of them were built in this international style, which is a much more I would say plainer than Art Deco. And here we have views of Brooklyn, the ferries passing through, and beautiful views of Stuyvesant Town. And look at that, absolutely gorgeous Queens, well, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island City. And the Queensboro Bridge. So that is the tour of the Empire State Building. That's the observation deck. You can really take your time here when you come. Right now during the pandemic, you can reserve tickets online. It's the same price as they used to be. And it's much emptier now. It's really awesome. And you can really take your time. Highly recommend coming here also during sunset. It's worth it. I'm Ariel with Urbanist. Thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone.